I can feel a tide turning in the YouTube beauty space. I can feel it. It's coming. And I'm about to break it down for you right now. I'm not sure if you've noticed this, but some channels are starting to get some backlash for not being let's just say transparent about the lack of quality of some of the products that are coming out these days. There are a lot of assumptions and thoughts about why people are doing this. So what I'm gonna do for you in this video is I'm gonna talk about kind of the influencer mindset and how that can influence a dishonest review. And I'm also gonna be telling you some channels that I feel like are amazing and wonderful for getting that no BS, I'm not gonna be bought by a brand kind of review. I've got five for you that have under 100,000 subscribers, and then I've got five for you that have over 100,000 subscribers. Now, I'm perfectly understanding that some people don't go on YouTube to get information that's valuable. Maybe you're going on YouTube just for entertainment purposes only. There's plenty of entertainment out there. If that's your purpose, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about today, people in the beauty space that are presenting information so that you can be educated about your purchases. Those are the videos and channels that I'm talking about. And just know that I am not judging any of these channels for the choices that they make. Everyone has a right to handle their channel any way that they choose. Just because I do things a certain way on my channel doesn't mean that everyone should do what I think is right. So let's go ahead and get started into the motivation piece. So this is this is what I believe from my own perspective and my own thoughts and things that I have thought myself and ideas that I have fought with in doing an honest review because it is it can be difficult to be 100% honest, when, you, especially when you first start getting brands sending you products for PR. And I feel like some brands are very, very good at targeting smaller channels in that they give these products to these smaller channels and they're so honored and thankful to get the product that of course they're not gonna say anything negative about the brand. But don't get me wrong, there are channels that are bigger channels that do the exact same thing. You know, they see the stars and the shine and the light of being on a PR list and that kind of blinds them to giving a 100% honest review. It can be almost euphoric to get these packages in the mail of free product. I mean, it's, it's wonderful. So it's really hard sometimes to not then have a bias toward that brand. Is it hard? Yes. Is it possible not to have a bias toward a brand that sends you free PR? Absolutely. And that's what I'm gonna talk to you about about these channels because they all do it. Some channels though, I feel like maybe it's not that they're being dishonest, it's just that they're not being thorough. People that take things out of a box and they put it on their face real quick and they look in the mirror and they say, this looks amazing, and then they put it out as a recommend. Personally, that is not something that I feel is a good way to talk to viewers about products. I don't think that that's responsible. It's one thing if it's a first impression review and you clearly say it's a first impression review, like I'm totally cool with that. But just to like very quickly slap something on your face five minutes after you bought it and to say that it's a recommend, that that gets to me a little bit. I feel like as creators, we need to make a choice. We need to make a choice of where our loyalties lie. Do our loyalties lie with the brands in that we wanna get as much PR as possible. We wanna get the products before everyone else to increase views on our channel. We want the brands to like us and repost us so that we can grow. Is that where our loyalties lie? Or do our loyalties lie with our subscribers in that if we're known for giving an honest review, people will continue to watch and continue to support and subscribe and share and all of that. So you've got two ways that you're feeding the success of your channel from the brand perspective and then also from the subscriber perspective. And the line here, it's very difficult to dance. It's very difficult to dance. One way people dance is that they choose not to review products that they don't like. And again, I'm not judging anybody that does this. I'm just saying that's one way people dance with the line. Another way people dance with the line is to give just half of a review, just say the positives without saying the negatives, but that's more on the brand friendly side. So let's go ahead and get into these channels that I think you should definitely be watching if you're looking for 
for the most honest, subscriber-friendly reviews. These are the channels I feel like are up and coming. These are the channels that I feel like are changing the tides. They are the ones that are bringing us into a new era of YouTube beauty videos. And I am so thankful to these channels for coming with me on this journey because I do feel like I have one of those channels that's kind of bringing us into that honest realm. So we're gonna go ahead and start off with Liv Loves Her Makeup. I'm gonna go ahead and show you a clip of Liv real quick just so you can kind of get a feel for who she is. Wednesday, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna to be talking about some brands that really, 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 really can overcharge. At least this is in my opinion, my conspiracy, allegedly, okay? The same thing goes for Physicians Formula. Some of their products are really good and I don't mind spending 15 to 18 dollars even if I can't find one of those little uh, it's like getting a golden ticket when you find a, uh, what is it, like a coupon code on them and you rip it off and bring it up to the register like, oh my god, it's only going to be $15 instead of $20, you know? Um, even with those little coupon codes, I would still purchase this bronzer. The Mura Mura Butter Bronzers are my all-time favorite bronzer formula. But some of their other products in their collection, you know, their eyeliners and some of their mascaras, a lot of stuff just is way too overpriced. It's now, I have to tell you, I, Liv kind of has grown on me. <laughs> she comes off as very intense. But the fact is, is that Liv gives really good information. She gives a very unique, educated perspective. And I feel like I have to be in the right mood to watch Liv because she is a little bit intense. I mean, she's got these piercing blue eyes that like see into your soul. Um, and she and she's she just gives, she doesn't edit. And she just kind of goes, bop, 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 bop. I mean, you think I talk fast and give you lots of information? Liv is like, woo, like head and shoulders better than me at that, giving you a lot of information in a short period of time. She's amazing. Um, but, but but it's just her perspective is just so interesting because we don't always agree on everything but I really like that she has tested and thoroughly thought about her ideas before she's come on camera so I think Liv is definitely an up-and-comer if you look at her number of subscribers and the amount of views she gets on her videos it's disproportionate in the number of views she gets I mean her subscribers love her and watch her and I definitely recommend you check her out Second channel is Samantha March, and she did actually recently do a uh, collaboration with Liv. One thing Samantha, I think, has as a huge advantage is she's really good at makeup. She's really good at tutorials. Her Instagram is also really good. She does a lot of those little short Instagram tutorials that are really good if you like tutorials. But her review videos, her videos where she um, talks about what she's gonna buy, what she's not gonna buy, I find them to be extremely helpful. I'm gonna go ahead and show you a clip of Samantha now. Yeah, stoked. Doped right here. This girl is excited for this palette. I saw this one. I saw the tags. I saw the photo. I saw what it was. I was like, yes, it is in my card at Ulta right now. I am so excited for this. I recently picked up my first Urban Decay After Glow uh, highlight shade. It's in Sin. I picked it up for the trying uh, my subscriber's favorite makeup video. So I tried it and I was like, oh my gosh, I need more of these highlighters. So if Samantha seems like a channel you think that you'll enjoy, definitely recommend you check her out as well. The next one is a love. I seriously, like, I have, I, number one, I can't watch this channel around my children because she causes her face off. Number two, I can't watch it around anybody that's trying to focus on anything because I'm laughing so hard. This is makeup struggles. All right, makeup struggles. I wish I knew what her real first name was because I don't think she's, I've ever seen a video where she said what her real first name is. She is one that she had, there's no line for her as far as dancing a line with a brand. She, she doesn't care. <laughs> I mean, it's very, very clear. She is 100% on the side of, I don't care about the brands. All I care about is giving you the best information possible, which is what I absolutely love. There's a video she did recently which I really enjoyed that I'm gonna show you a clip of real quick. It's of her reorganizing different palettes that she felt like were just, the color selection was just not good. And I was so excited to see this video from her because she has such a good eye for color and, and organizing things. And, and I just really love to see her perspective and how she would change some of these palettes. So here's a clip of that video. It's really good. It's really, really good. This is the Too Faced White Chocolate Bar Palette. <laughs> Too Faced, you cannot be putting out <laughs> they, they, let me say something. They don't give off. <laughs> Too Faced is like, all of you, we got a billion dollars. We're going to do what the f we want, whenever the f we want. Too Faced is that loud parent at parent teacher conference, and they know that their kids are bad as f but they are going to defend their children and continue to raise them the same f way they've been doing because they don't give a that is Two-Face. Two-Face is that parent that's not willing to progress because there ain't no way in there ain't no way in 
they thought this was a good idea. They're, they're playing with us. They are playing with us and our emotions. This don't make no damn sense. So that's Makeup Struggles. If you think you would enjoy her channel, I definitely love it. Whenever she uploads, it's like one of those ones where it's like automatic. I'm gonna watch this video 100%. The, the next one is one you may not have heard of, but I'm telling you, she is one that you gotta watch out for. Her name's Georgia Harris. And there was a live chat a while back where I was crediting Makeup Struggles. Actually, I was thinking it was my anti haul. I was crediting Makeup Struggles for uh, information that I was giving about, I forget, a couple of different products. I know it was like a Tarte palette where she had called it like the bird poop palette or something. It wasn't Makeup Struggles. It was Georgia Harris. And Georgia came in my comments. She was like, Jen, I think that was my video, not Makeup Struggles. I was like, oh my gosh. So for the record, I love Makeup Struggles, but I was actually quoting a video that I had just watched by Georgia Harris. I'm going to show you a clip of that video right now. And then we have this thing, which apparently it's called like the Becca, like radiant, gradient glow or something. They might as well just call this the Becca rooftop shingles highlighter. So this thing gives me anxiety because there's like five different colors. It's all shingly. I don't get what the shingles was. It's like bad snake skin, dragon scales. You basically have to swirl this product together because if you go in any other way, you're gonna get like chunks of different colors. If you do wanna have separate colors, you can't go in with a, like a highlighting brush. You're gonna have to use an eyeshadow brush to get in there and like get the tweezers and pull it apart and put the surgical table down and then get the overhead light and the scalpel to cut out the sections you wanna use. It's just, no, I don't wanna deal with it. I just want a regular highlight. I just want regular highlighters with one colored pans. Not only is Georgia hilarious, but she is so thorough and fun and different. And I love her. I absolutely love her. She, the reason why I found her is because she's one of my subscribers. She follows me on Twitter and she mentioned something about making a video and I checked it out and I immediately fell in love. Just really enjoying her channel. I think you're gonna love her. She recently did a video depotting the Kat Von D Saint and Sinner palette and reorganizing it. So if you're interested in that, I will link that one down below as well along with the one that I just showed you. Just a really, really interesting video to see how she depotted it and also how she reorganized it. It was really cool. And the last one under 100,000 is Lauren May Beauty. This is another one like Makeup Struggles where she is, there's no like, I'm thinking about the brand here. Like she is all about the subscriber. She does a lot of those videos, kind of like Nikki Murphy, if you've ever seen Nikki Murphy. Nikki Murphy's been around forever, but um, Nikki Murphy's another really good one. But she does a lot of videos where she kind of breaks down community issues. She's very much uh, presents herself, not necessarily as a video creator, as much as a video watcher. But I think that's a very unique perspective and a unique, a unique spin on the beauty video to really break things down from a viewer's perspective. And I think you're really gonna like her. I'm gonna show you a clip right now. And now that it's like, popular to make these PR videos. I think that's great. But what I can't stand is them complaining that they don't get PR from certain brands. Like, at this point, you are so successful that you're getting just so much makeup to your inbox. And if you don't get something from someone, guess what? You definitely have the means to buy it, you know? Um, and I think that's my biggest thing. It just, it feels so out of touch with reality, especially when you think about how much money people are spending on makeup who don't get these PR packages, who just love YouTubers and love the beauty community. They're buying all this makeup with their hard-earned money, money that they're, they're not even making nearly as much as you're making. Um, and they're spending their money on all the stuff you get for free. So um, it's it's just kind of like tacky to me to complain about not being on a PR list. One thing I love about Lauren May Beauty is that she is just no BS. She tells you how she feels and she's really smart about it. You know, the way that she's thinking about things, and it makes me go, oh, I hadn't thought of it like that. Like when I did my Jaclyn Hill video that people either really, really loved or really, really hated, she did a video very similar to that one, but did it in a much better way that, that I, the way that I should have done it, which was to be more general rather than to be specific. I will link that video down below. Um, and she d just does a really good job of breaking down that information. So if you like my truth series, you're going to love Lauren May Beauty. And bonus, check out Nikki Murphy too. She's great.
All right, let's switch gears a little bit and we're gonna go into channels over 100,000 that I feel like are just really changing the game. And I feel like these channels are super, super important because they do have the most reach, more reach than these smaller channels like me who just broke 100,000 and you know the channels under 100,000. These are the channels I'm counting on to hold on to their integrity. I feel like they've all proved themselves to be extremely honest. I'm gonna keep Stephanie and Nicole out of this list because I think that's kind of a given that you guys know how much I love Stephanie. I just did a collaboration with her and I'm going to keep her off the list, but kind of like my Nikki Murphy for my under 100,000. My over, my over 100,000 is Stephanie Nicole. My first one that I really want to mention to you is Jackie Ina. And if you haven't seen Jackie Ina, I've mentioned her before in other videos. I just admire her integrity and she's one that goes on brand trips. She's one that's worked with different brands and I feel like she has held on to her integrity. And one of the videos I really love from her was her milk makeup review. She bought a bunch of milk makeup and she reviewed it honestly. The brand not only watched her video but now they're improving their products based on Jackie's recommendations and I feel like that is what this is all about is providing information not just to the viewers, but also to the brand about how to make products better. I mean, this is like a win-win. So I feel like Jackie being at the number that she's at is kind of a leader of this movement and I just really appreciate her. So if you haven't checked out Jackie, I'm gonna go ahead and insert a clip right now. I spent a lot of money at Chipotle. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, Jackie O. Jackie, 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 Jackie. I've been meaning to do a full face of milk makeup for quite some time now. And milk makeup, from what I've seen and discovered so far, it takes a very like model on the go approach to makeup. You know, the whole appeal with the silicone applicator is it's supposed to save product and you know, you don't waste any drop, but like that's, the point of using sponges is you don't want all the product on your face, you know, like I want a little bit of, I feel like I put on a hell of a lot of product. <laughs> That's what I don't like about these sponges now I'm remembering, like it doesn't fall back a little bit, you know, like I don't really want, if I give two pumps of foundation, I don't really want two pumps of foundation. Like I'm a woman, what do you expect? I never know what the hell I want. Do you really think I want full coverage? No, duh. I had the opportunity to meet Raw Beauty Christie. Uh, I guess it was right before she was in the NYX Face Awards or right after she started in the NYX Face Awards. I found her right before and I just became hooked on her channel. If you haven't seen Christie, she is so incredibly talented with makeup. That is her thing. Like she is so good. But what she's really been doing lately, which I think has pushed her to the next level, is her reviews. Her reviews are very similar to mine and Stephanie's in that she talks about price per gram, she talks about, um, she does the swatches, she does the look, and she just did a prison palette review and somebody commented very appropriately underneath, if Christy can't make it work, no way I'm gonna make it work. I'm paraphrasing here, but I just, I feel like that's kind of the way I feel about Christy's videos in that Christy is so incredibly talented. If she can't make a palette work or she can't make a product work, chances are I'm not gonna be able to make it work either. So if you've never seen Christy, check her out right now. Hey guys, today I'm going to be doing a full face of first impressions on new makeup products. It's like broken, so it doesn't wanna. <laughs> oh, you. Okay, so it doesn't really have much of a scent. If anything, it sort of smells like, like the YMCA. Like it looks like it's being full coverage, right? But you can totally see my skin peeking through. And it's almost as if when I pat over the top of it, it's like coming up. I would say that the name of this foundation is a liar. Invisaware is more like completely obvious you're wearing foundation wear. Moving on to Alyssa Ashley. She's just so chill and so nice and so calm. And she's so stinking beautiful. Like she's really pretty. She's really, really talented, but she's also not afraid to keep it real. Just like Jackie, she's done a lot of collaborations. She's done one with Elf for a lip gloss. She worked with NYX on their palettes. She's now working with Makeup Geek for their new collection. She's She's been in it, but she's still not afraid to be honest, which I truly appreciate. She's very thorough in her review, she really thinks about what she's gonna say, and I just appreciate her a lot, and I appreciate what she's bringing to the beauty community. So check out Alyssa right now. Hey, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how I got this look using the palette and just my overall review on the palette itself, and if it's worth your money. Is it a concept or is it canceled? We're gonna find out. So my favorite, I would say, out of all the shimmers, it's definitely Gruel, only because it's such a nice green 
The only thing I would say about Gruel though is that the texture of it is different than the other shimmers in the palette and it's a little bit chunky so you want to be mindful when applying it because it will have some fallout but aside from that the color itself is really pretty. The last two are going to be no surprise because these are channels that I have admired for a very long time. The next one is my inspiration for this channel, my original inspiration, Emily Noel 83. I like, I even get choked up talking about Emily and what, oh my gosh, am I going to cry? <laughs> No, Jen, this is stupid. Why would I cry? Oh my gosh. I think it's just because like she means so much to me, you know? Oh my gosh, really? This is happening right now? I had no idea that was going to happen. We, maybe we'll hold off on Emily for a minute. Let's go back to Emily for a minute because I don't want to cry in this video. That's, that's stupid. Why would I cry? I'm just an emotional person. Let's go on to the next one and we'll go back to Emily once I've calmed my face down. So let's talk about Jessica from Jam Beauty 89. Just as always stayed true to herself. Really, really great channel. Just very good at, you know, talking about products from a user standpoint. She does a lot of drugstore, which I really, really appreciate because I feel like even myself, I'm really grateful gravitating toward those Sephora brands where she has always done a lot of drugstore. She does some high-end stuff every once in a while, but she really keeps it real with the drugstore. And, and I think that's awesome because if we can find excellent products at the drugstore, like the NYX Epic Ink Liner that I'm wearing today, that's amazing, that's just as good as the high-end, like that is where I want to be. And I definitely, I mean, she has the opportunity to definitely be biased toward different brands, but she's not. She's real, she's to the point, and I'm going to go ahead and show you her right now. Hey Jessica, and today I have empties for you. All right, next empty is my e.l.f. hydrating bubble mask. I really liked this stuff. Do I think it was like the most hydrating mask in the world? No, but it's enjoyable. It's not crazy expensive. Ew, it's kind of dirty, but you push this. I think there's a little bit left. Yeah, there is. Um, you push this and the product comes up into it. You put it on your face. Yeah, you put a thin layer all over your damp skin and after a minute or two, bubbles kind of start to form and it kind of tickles and feels good. It's, I think, more fun than effective, but it is fun. And if you've never tried one like this, it, I mean, it's pretty affordable and it, it's just cool. So that is Jessica. Let me see if I can go back to Emily without like getting all boo. Okay, so Emily, I remember watching a long time ago, she did a video where she was talking about, this was years ago, about the Too Faced teddy bear brushes and they were sent to her and she didn't like them. And she was honest about it and I was like, Oh my gosh. I mean, this was when I was just starting to get PR sent to me. I was like, if Emily can do this, I can do it. And that's the way I feel about her. I feel like she showed me. She showed me that people could get a products for PR and still be honest. She doesn't do any sponsored content at all. If you haven't seen Emily Noel 83, she's just celebrating her 10 years on YouTube. I don't know how you haven't come across her by now, but if you haven't for some reason seen her, check her out right now. Hey guys, thank you so, so much for being with me today. In this video, I am going to be tackling Oprah's favorite things. I love her, I respect her, but I'm going to give you my true honest thoughts that you come to my channel to find. I'm going to give that to you in this video. First but this is what's inside 25 whipped lip products. And I'm really picky with lip color textures, especially these matte liquid lipsticks. Some of them I have no patience for, you know, like the ones that just dry down and they feel completely uncomfortable. I am so thrilled to say that I love this formula. It's a combination of a wonderful formula and also the delivery method or the tip, you know, the way it goes on your lips is so, so good. So as you can see, I have an emotional attachment to Emily. <laughs> <laughs> very emotionally attached to her content. She is just, if you look at her videos from five, six years ago, and you look at one now, she's the exact same person. She is one that has is basically captured in time as far as the original, awesome YouTube beauty reviewers from when I first started watching beauty videos. And to me, she's the only one that I used to watch back then that I still watch today and that still makes videos. I don't know what else to say about Emily other than I just, she's amazing. She's, ah. like I was saying a minute ago, there is a misconception out there that people can't do sponsored videos, can't get PR products and still be honest. These 10 channels, and I hope you find my channel, to be contrary to that. Um, I just did a video, a sponsor video for FabFitFun, and in the end of the video, I said straight up, 
I wouldn't have bought this box for 50 bucks. And that was my honest opinion and it was a sponsored video. What I care about is having a good YouTube channel, about feeling proud about what I'm giving to you as far as the information that I'm presenting to you. And I feel like these 10 channels are on that same path. This is not a hashtag brutally honest movement, okay? Because we already know that when just because someone puts hashtag brutally honest doesn't mean they're actually being brutally honest. What this is, is a movement of people that are just genuinely trying to give you good quality YouTube content. And the way that you can support that content is by voting with your views. People say, you know, you vote with your dollar. On YouTube, you vote with your views. At this point, I'm going to turn the conversation over to you. I would love to know some of the channels that you count on for those 100% honest, transparent, I don't care about the brand, all I care about is you videos. I wanna know who you're watching so that I can start watching some of those channels that I might not have discovered if it weren't for you. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, which I hope you did, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. That makes me look super cool in the YouTube algorithm and helps my video to be more likely to be seen by people on YouTube that are not subscribed. So I appreciate when you do that. And you can also subscribe if you wanna see more videos from me. I do put out nine videos per week, five makeup minutes, which is makeup news, and then our What's Up In Makeup weekly makeup news show on Sundays. And then I do three other videos per week that are like tip trick review videos. Uh, those typically come out on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Friday, unless something happens where you know the schedule gets off a little bit for the most part it's Monday Wednesday Friday so thank you again so much for watching mad love and I will see you in a video soon